Hey guys, it's Melissa, otherwise known as Mokins, and I wanted to do something a little bit different today. If you watched my last Loot Crate unboxing video, you'll remember that we got the book Regrettable Supervillains. So there's three sections in this book, and I wanted to pick a supervillain from each section and do a little read-along with you and go through what those characters are all about. So the first one that I wanted to read is Reefer King. So this is what the page looks like. His main enemy is Yankee Boy. So let's jump into it. Reefer King, scoop up those reefers and makins. You've got to help me harvest the crop before we scram. Every form of American media has, at one point or another, addressed the perceived threat of marijuana use by engaging in some elaborate hyperbole. Healthy, vibrant youngsters were turned into leering, hunched over maniacs. Scintillating intellects were draped in never-ending psychosis. Law-abiding citizens became hardened, murder-happy gunslingers overnight, all in the name of feeding a ravenous habit, reefer madness. One Mary Jane Lace Menace is a so-called reefer king, a shady dealer of funny cigarettes. At no point in the story are the illicit cigarettes ever referred to as marijuana or cannabis. Taking advantage of a wartime shortage of tobacco products, King, aided by the equally violent Creeper, approaches shopkeepers with an alluring offer. At a dime per cig, he tells the humble, humble owner of an otherwise legit cigar store, you'll be making yourself a 100% profit, Mac, and when your customers get in the habit, you'll be in clover. It's too good an offer to pass up, which is how Mac ends up selling something new to innocent teenage tobacco aficionado, Mickey. There's certainly something jarring, even amusingly ironic, about the story that condemns the use of marijuana while blithely approving the unhealthy habit of underage smoking. Puffing away in a filthy back alley, the Reefer King's insidious cigarettes affect a strange change in the youngster. He notes that the smoke makes him think different. Producing a toy pistol from nowhere, Mickey tells us, this four-bit cat pistol looks like a real gun in the dark. I'm getting ideas. Mickey's joint-inspired attempt to hold up a gas station gets him slapped around by an attendant and hauled off to prison. Soon, local law enforcement informs all-American teen Vic Martin, aka Yankee Boy, about the bad cigarettes being sold around town. When Yankee Boy confronts King, the kahuna of cannabis is quick to turn to violence, pulling a gun on Yankee Boy and firing wildly into the streets. For good measure, he shoots Mac, the cigar shop owner, directly in the face. Yankee Boy pursues King back to his hideout, where he engages in knockdown dragout battle with King and Creeper. The duo attack Yankee Boy with clubs and scythes, but in the end, they're defeated by the kid hero. Forced to walk back to the police headquarters, King and his partner reflect on the ultimate lesson of their wickedness. Why was we so dumb, King? asks Creeper. Wow. So, <laughs> here's the picture in the book. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. So, Reefer King is the enemy of Yankee Boy, created by Sam Cooper. He de debuted in Dynamic Comics number 16, and he's not to be confused with Burger King, though he often hangs out in the parking lot there. That's a good little side note. <laughs> so, the, so, the next character that I want to read is Animal Vegetable Mineral Man. What? So, here is the page for that. So, Animal Vegetable Mineral Man is the enemy of the Doom Patrol. He was created by Arnold Drake and Bruno Premiana, Pre Premiani, and he debuted in Doom Patrol Volume 1, and the only thing missing is the kitchen sink. Animal Vegetable Mineral Man, I have succeeded in duplicating that process of creating life artificially. Part of the appeal of superhero comics is a limitless range of superpowers characters can possess. Transform into a tiger? Control the elements? Snake your limbs around an adversary like a clinging vine? Everything is possible. And, in some instances, a lucky, a lucky character is loaded with practically every superpower in the book. Such is the case with Animal Vegetable Mineral Man, a villain with a mouthful of a name and a list of abilities as lengthy as the Oxford English Dictionary. When the future Animal Vegetable Mineral Man first appears, he's a mild-mannered but brilliant scientist named Sven Larsen. A one-time student of Niles Calder, aka the Chief, leader and founder of the superhero, superheroic Doom Patrol, Larson had maintained a grudge against his former instructor for years, but he visits Calder seemingly to make amends. Also on Larson's agenda is the demonstration of his new scientific discovery. 
According to our latest theory of the origin of life, he explains, it began when amino acids, complex chemical compounds floating in our barren seas, were bombarded by lightning. Standing astride a metal, a metal walkway over a bubbling pit, rarely a good idea in comics, Larson gets to the juicy bit. I have succeeded in duplicating that process of creating life artificially. Perched mere feet over his swirling concoction, he barely has time to explain his process before promptly falling directly into the churning soup. Those are the last words Larson speaks, but the result of his chemical bath do the talking for him. Emerging as a giant malevolent paramecium, the transformed Larson creates a path of wanton destruction. As if to prove his very talents, he rapidly cycles through a series of bizarre transformations, from Parmesium to Sulfur Giant to Creeping Ivy to Titanic Bird. His most famous look is the bizarre amalg amalgam shown on the cover. Part man, part dinosaur, part crystal, part tree. Whoa. Modestly adorned in a blue leotard. Even better. Calder declares it is animal, vegetable, or mineral. It's all three. That's some good science. It becomes clear that Larson's grudge against the chief is anything but settled. Ironically, it's the cause of their feud, an anti-decay ray which he claims Calder stole, that proves the undoing of animal, vegetable, mineral man. Larson returns to his human form. Although he would later regain his mojo and return to pester the Doom Patrol, Animal Vegetable Mineral Man pro provides a humbling lesson that a villain wielding such tremendous power was nonetheless undone by his own worst enemy, himself. So let's just take a look again at this guy. Like, what even is this? <laughs> oh, man. These are pretty good. So the last character that I wanted to read was the Roach Wrangler. Can we get more excited than that? I don't think so. So he is the enemy of the Badger. He was created by Mark by Mike Barron and Bill Reinhold. He debuted in the Badger number 27, not to be confused with Wrangler Roach, cowboy vermin who does not exist yet. The Roach Wrangler. We leave at midnight every roach in the city of Chicago. Considering that they're one of the most problematic, hated, and reviled household pests, it's kind of surprising that cockroaches haven't inspired more comic book villains. One of the select few is the Roach Wrangler, whose powers and appearance are as gross as the name implies. Answering to the slumlord Elmo Zims, who bears an uncanny resemblance to musician Fats Waller, the Roach Wrangler is employed to coerce Chicago's plentiful roach population into helping Zims clear his property of troublesome tenants. Curious about his partner in crime, Zims asks the Roach Wrangler to explain how he gained the power to control the cockroach. I was a pest control officer with the U.S. Information Agency in, the, in Sudan, the villain recounts. I was lost in a sandstorm and fell into a pit. It was the entrance of an undiscovered Egyptian tomb. I lay trapped there for 30 days. I had nothing to eat or drink but the roaches. An endless parade straight into my mouth. I knew I was changing. I could not help myself. Ugh. Settle your stomach as the Wrangler goes on to describe how, after his month spent trapped in the hidden tomb, he was given a gift by his skittering roommates, a golden roach-shaped roach wand. From that day forth, they have danced to my tune, he says. The Roach Wrangler has designs on ruling Chicago as its undisputed roach king, but he comes into conflict with Wisconsin's resident costume vigilante, the Badger, a martial artist with multiple personalities and a seemingly supernatural connection to the animal kingdom. At the Illinois-Wisconsin state line, the two armies converge. On the Roach Wrangler side, one billion roaches make a noise like fat sizzling on a white-hot griddle, amplified beyond the threshold of pain. Interesting. On the Badger side, however, is a repelling force of steamrollers, road graders, trained elephants, horses, rats, cats, and dogs. At his rallying cry of, Goosh! Goosh for all your worth! The badger and his forces demolish the roaches, reducing the swarm masses to a pace suitable only for lawn fertilizer. As for the roach wrangler, his popularity surges. With Chicago having been depleted of its troublesome cockroach population, other cities seek to employ him as a pied piper of pests. He fails to take the offer, preferring to occasionally return for more roach-related criminality. Still, it must be nice to have a career to fall back on. Awesome. Here is another close-up of the cover that he debuted in. Really, really interesting. I actually really enjoy reading through these. There's a ton listed in here. Um, 
it was a Loot Crate exclusive, but if you guys want me to pick more from the book and read them to you, just let me know and I'll do another video like this. So I will talk to you guys later, and thank you guys so much for watching. Have an awesome week and a great Thanksgiving. Bye, guys. I'm pretty sure I could eat my weight in chips and dip. I wonder how many bags of chips that would be. Would it be my weight in chips and dip combined or my weight in chips and my weight in dip put together? Has anyone else done the challenge of eating their weight in something? We ponder the important things here.